everyone, this is Dr. Walker, and this is video 205. It is called Electric Force. So, this was also too cute not to share. It is a picture of me, and I'm touching a Van de Graaff generator, and my hair stands up. You may have seen this in movies or something like that. So, what do you think is happening here? Please put your thoughts in the comments below. So, in previous videos, we have talked about how like charges repel, opposite charges attract. So if there is a, an attraction or a repulsion, then that means that there's a force between these two charges. And that is what Coulomb's law is going to tell us about. It's going to tell us about the force between charges. So the force is F, and then Q1 and Q2 are the two charges. And then R is the distance between the two charges. And you can see that R is squared here. And K here is called Coulomb constant. It has a value of 8.99 times 10 to the 9 Newton meter squared over Coulomb squared. So it does have a very high value. And it allows us to get an accurate number for the force between the two charges. So one thing you'll notice about this picture, it does show the like charges being repelled and the opposite charges attracting each other. One thing you'll notice is the notation, such as F12 or F21. So this right here, F12, is the force on 2, but it's due to charge 1, right? So F12 means, you know, by number 1, right, acting on, oops, action, not acting on number two. So number the first subscript is the doer, the second subscript is the receiver. So one thing you'll notice about this force is that it is always along the line joining the two charges. In this video we're going to use this equation conceptually and then in the next video we will use this equation in, uh, and use numbers. One thing I would like to mention now is that these charges have absolute values and this is because this equation here the way i have written it it's only going to give us the magnitude of the force if you remember magnitude meaning the amount of the force and that's why we don't care if the charges are positive or negative we'll worry about the direction of the force in the next video so let's take a look at the two questions the first one here says that the charge of sphere 2 is twice that of sphere 1, which vector shows the force of 2 acting on 1? So this is the doer, this is the receiver, so this is F21 is what we're looking for. What the picture is showing us here is F1 on 2, which is, using my notation, that would be F12. So we're looking for F21. So Think about it, pause the video for a second, and let me go ahead and give you a hint. So you've got two objects, two objects, you have a force between them. If object two is repelled by object one, then that means that object one is repelled by object two. So you know, first of all, that the force on object one is going to point to the left. So you can already delete choices D and E. And then the next thing, and this is a really big hint, so pause the video if you need to. But this, whenever you are just switching to subscripts, this should take you back to physics 1. If you know F12, and if you're looking for F21, this is the exact same force, right? It's just in opposite directions. So Newton's third law applies here. Newton third law tells us that F12 is equal to negative F21, right? Same magnitude of force, just in opposite direction. So just based on that, that tells you that the force is actually going to have the same size, just in the opposite direction. So the correct answer would be choice B. Now, students are usually confused because it says, well, this one has more charge than this one. But if you go back to the equation, Coulomb's law, F equals KQ1, Q2 over R squared, you can see that the amount of charge, right, the magnitude of each charge, we're taking the absolute value here, the amount of each charge is affecting how much force there is. So by there being more charge on number two, all that means 
is that you're going to have a stronger force. If you had two charges, one and two, but they just had a little bit of charge on each one, if you just put a little bit of charge here, multiply it together, you're going to get a smaller overall force. So they would just have a smaller overall force between them, but the force would still be the same and in opposite directions. Let's take a look at the last question here. It says again that the charge on sphere two is twice that of sphere one. This time it wants to, it's asking for the force of one on two. So we're looking for F12. If the distance between the spheres is reduced to R over two. So we want R to actually become R over two instead of R. So in the picture, the distance between the, the charges is R and the force is this big. Now what happens if you have the same charges, oops, but you are halving the distance between them. So now the distance here is R over two. We want to know how does the force change and we're still looking for the force on number two. So we still know it's going to point to the right. Okay, so whenever you have this type of question, the first thing you wanna do is conceptualize it. The charges are getting closer together. So according to our equation, F equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared. If the charges are closer together, that means that R is going to be smaller. If R is smaller, then the force is bigger. So conceptually, you know that the force between them is going to get bigger. So you can already eliminate choices A and B just like that. So always do that when you have this type of question, which it doesn't require numbers, but it's still conceptual and the equation is still helpful. So to get an exact amount of for the force, not an exact value, but how the force compares to the original one, what I like to do is just take our original equation and then plug in the variable that has changed and see what happens to that equation. So I'll do this on the left here. We have the new force here. So this is the new one. Like this over here is the old one. The old one was kq1q2 over r squared. Now the new one here is going to be f equals kq1q2. The charges haven't changed. But instead of r, it's going to be r over 2 squared. So make sure to put all of that in parentheses and then square it, and then do some algebra, simplify, see what happens. We're going to get kq1q2, r squared over 2 squared, right? Both of them get squared. So we can rewrite that one more time. That's going to be kq1q2 over r squared over 4. So we have two fractions here. When we have two fractions, what I like to do is multiply by the reciprocal. So instead of having kq1q2 over r squared over 4, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of r squared over 4, which is 4 over r squared. We're going to flip that bottom fraction. So what we're going to end up with is kq1q2, instead of dividing by r squared over 4, we're going to multiply by 4 over r squared. See what happens. The 4 can come to the front. We're just multiplying everything. So we're going to have 4q1q2 and then over r squared. So you'll get used to this after you do it a few times. But what we notice is that the original force was kq1q2 over r squared. The new force now has an extra factor of 4. That means that the new force is four times as big. If we look at the answer choices, this arrow is actually about twice as big. So this was actually not the right answer either. The answer is actually none of the above because the force was actually twice as big, uh, four times as big when you cut the distance to half. So that's it for this video. We did a little bit of conceptual questions dealing with Coulomb's law. And in the next video, we will look at it in more detail and really look at the vector na nature of this force and how to use the equation once we have to deal with these vectors.